Nearly a quarter of a million dollars is up for grabs here in New Orleans, Louisiana. The South Regional Final Table has seen one crushing beat after another. Now just five players remain. Who will secure the ring? Will it be steamrolling chip leader A.J. Jejelowo? Or can surging southerner Ali Prescott make his presence felt? On the banks of the Mississippi, only one river matters. The last one. Hi, everyone. Welcome back for the conclusion of the South Regional Championship here at Harris Casino in downtown New Orleans. Party action is on Bourbon Street, and the poker action is right here. Alina Jha joined by Antonio Esfandiari and five hopefuls, including professional player Ali Prescott out of Memphis, Harry Cullen out of Houston, Texas. He's got another man from Houston next to him, Gary Friedlander. A.J. Jejelowo, your chip leader, originally from across the pond in Manchester, and Scott Lipschutz, also from Houston. So Texas is well represented. A.J. atop the leaderboard. Everyone's got a decent amount of play left in their stack. Gary Friedlander is on the short stack. 2.2 million in chips in play and $236,000 going to the winner. Blinds at 4 and 8,000 with an ante of 1K. Lipschutz will kick us off. He's got King 5 suited. Both he and Ali will pitch. Cullen with 6-4 suited on the button. A little different than the two aces he's used to looking at. Getting after the blinds. He's halfway home, but AJ is having none of it. He's going to defend against the min raise. They'll take a flop of deuce, 8-3 rainbow. AJ with a quick check. Cullen has the gut shot straight draw and control of the pot, but declines to fire. He did not follow through there. If you raise with the 6-4 and it comes 2-3-8 and your opponent checks to, you almost always want to take a stab at it. Instead, they've checked not only the flop, but the turn as well. Board pairs on the river. AJ checks one final time. Cullen with the 6 high here, last to act. I can't imagine him checking. He can't possibly win in a showdown. He's got a bet. <laughs> And A.J. doesn't have to call, but he does. Uh, Taking down the pot with queen high. <laughs> and the old gut shot. You had my five. No wonder I didn't get it. What do you call me with, queen? Nice call. He almost beat you with the five. Jeez, what am I going to do, man? That was one of those times where you really just hoped he turned it in face down, right? <laughs> just in case. <laughs> yeah. Pretty strong call by A.J., He's going to be on his way to Las Vegas for the national championship, as are the other eight members of this final table. 27 players will join them from the other three regional championship final tables, as well as 64 players from World Series circuit stops across the country. Now, they're all going to compete in a million-dollar free roll in Las Vegas, where the winner is going to take home $300,000 and a gold bracelet. And to make that happen, you got to be capable of calls like the one A.J. just made, huh? Yes, that was a great call. Colin played his hand in a way where it was kind of clear that he had nothing, and he wasn't value betting an ace high on the river. So calling with queen high made sense. A.J.'s right back in action here. Smooth calling Cullen's pre-flop raise with ace-king on the button. A little tricky. Very deceptive. Colin will never put him on the ace-king. Round two between these guys. Swing and a miss for Cullen. Pretty good flop for AJ. Top pair, top kicker. Cullen's going for the C bet. Unfortunately for him, this time he's a little off. Will AJ continue the slow play or put the raise in right here? It's going to be the latter. He makes it 75,000 total. Like the raise, it's a scary board to just flat here with the ace-king. There's a lot of bad cards that can come on the turn to slow down the action. And maybe Colin has a king and he's going to go with it. Instead, it's curtains for Harry's operation. It's kind of rough against that big stack down there, isn't it? It's a little rough. 
It's a little stormy. <laughs> Just got fat thumbs. Well, Colin thinking he might have been pushed around a little bit, but still in good spirits after going 0 for 2 is, is against the big stack. Or is this one this episode where... Uh, that's not just any big stack. That's one with a biomedical engineering degree. Currently working as a medical researcher at Rice University and on a major project supported by the American Heart Association. AJ is researching tissue samples from people with serious heart disease. Wow. You know any other people that play cards that have that on the resume? I don't. That's pretty impressive, AJ. He's made a 25000 here with Ace-4 suited, and Prescott taking a page out of AJ's book, smooth calling with the big ace on the button. And that has a lot to do with the history and the flow of them so far. If someone is 3-betting light a lot and gets ace-queen, you definitely want to 3-bet it, because that's what you've been doing anyway. However, in this spot, he chose to flat. All diamond flop, king high, neither player with the flush draw. Jejelowo just checks it, as does Prescott. Could be a somewhat troublesome card. Top pair now for AJ. Prescott with the better kicker. These are the two big stacks at the table. AJ bets 40,000. And he's staring right at Prescott. Definitely having a little staring battle. Tell you anything? Well, you know, you can always get information by looking at your opponent. Um, in this particular case, I don't know if AJ got anything off Prescott or not, but he was certainly looking at him. Do you ever give anything away? Of course. I mean, even myself, I've been there a million times. You know, when I make a bet, I always try and do the same exact thing with my hands, with my chips, where I look, what I say. Poker is information. Ask Phil Ivy, he'll tell you. Ivy known as... One of the few that can stare right into someone's soul. But right now it's about A.J. Jejelowo and Ali Prescott. After a bet and a call of 40000 on the turn, A.J. check call 75000 on the river. And these two are going to chop it with the paired board. Wasn't exactly Ali's idea of a good river card. Chop. Oh. I like the value bet on the river with the ace queen. There's a chance that he gets his opponent to fold, and he's pretty sure that he has the best hand, so why not bet? Well, for AJ, a little luck went a long way there. I got lucky on that one. I had no idea that was an insult in Swahili. Can you tell me what's going on here? Uh, just some friends who come over for a uh, quick game of poker. There is a better way to bring the world together for a game of poker. Take on the world at the world's largest poker room. Partypoker.com. Everyone's playing. Welcome back to the Big Easy for more of the South Regional Championship. Tonight marks the fourth of four regional events. Next up for 100 qualifiers is the national championship. But they'd better keep their minds on the task at hand. It's fun. In the meantime... Just be patient, AJ. You're getting a little bit of time. What's that? Obviously, I'm not very patient. AJ wants to finish it off right now. I mean, I need some more footage for the camera. Friedlander looking to pump the brakes, but I doubt he's going to feel the same way after looking down at two aces. Such a great feeling to look down at those two cards and have a match and be aces at a final table. Just feels good. Good enough to make it 26,000 to go, that's for sure. AJ starting to open up a little bit with the calls. 8-5 suited. He's got a big stack, and he knows that he can bully his way around, and he's doing what he should be doing. Got a little piece of this flop with a pair of eights. Action on Gary Friedlander, and he's going to slide a hefty bet out there, 54000 That's a serious bet. Basically, he's telling AJ that he's committing his whole stack. And AJ is going to help him get there. He makes his first mistake at this final table. Friedlander makes the call, and he is poised to double up. All he's got to do is avoid an 8 or a 5 from here forward. Sometimes easier said than done. Well, the 4 on the turn changes things a little bit. Jack out there. Jejelowo can now win the pot with an 8, 5, or 6. Four of diamonds is a safe river. Good hand, Gary. 
Jeez. Friedlander is going to double up to almost 350,000 in chips. AJ's taking a hit, but he's still in control. When you win all the small ones, it's okay to lose a big one here and there. The Houston trio is parked firmly in the bottom three. You think Alan Kessler's still talking to himself in the lobby? He very well could be. We love the chainsaw. How do you not love the chainsaw? I don't know. I can't answer that. Oh, come oh, on. Are you kidding me? What's the, how much does the buffet cost? Can you give us that? Can you give us that? That? Amount for can you give us the amount give that the buffet costs for uh, bamboo? Steakhouse. Looks like the players are lobbying for some food comp over here. Where's the focus? Colin opening up his game with the six two suited. I like it. Friedlander likes it a little more with two tens. Just coming off the aces. He's gonna smooth call on the button. Colin has been playing tighter than your average player, as we discussed earlier. And so Friedlander doesn't want to have to re-raise and commit his old stack with two tens. Completely understand what he's up to. Lip shoots with ace nine off. He's in the big blind. All in. Ships it all in for 264,000 total. That makes quick work of Harry. But now it's over to Gary. And it's a whole lot more to call. It's going to make good TV. It's a tough spot, but I think you have to go with it. Lipschutz thought that Freelander was weak in just calling behind Everybody him, not 3-betting. And he went for it with the ace-9. I think so. And Gary's got to know that. Gary has to take that into consideration, absolutely. I call. You're good. Well, Friedlander makes the big call. And this is twisted. Remember... Scott is good uh, friends there? with Gary Friedlander's son. Small world. Chop. Chop. So his good friend is rooting for him or his dad? I don't know. We got to phone a friend and find out. Pretty sure it's the dad. Here comes the flop. All diamonds. You got them. Friedlander's got the flush draw blocked with the ten of diamonds. All he needs to do is fade a black ace. And there it is. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Now Friedlander needs a 10 or a diamond. Mom and stepdad, all fist pumps in the peanut gallery for Scott. God, that ace just peeled right off. Oh, oh, but a diamond on the end, and the pendulum swings back the other direction. That's going to some good TV stuff. That spells the end for Scott Lipschutz. He gave it his best effort, really couldn't get much going. Going to collect a little over $48,000 and have plenty of time to go back to shooting craps, playing tennis, following the stock market and UT football, and working on that hip-hop album that he tells us he's hip -hop got the works. Yeah. This tournament was great. I mean, it's a great warm-up. Uh, it was only 75 people, really small field. Four days for a 75-person field a long time. And the grind was pretty tough at times, but, you know, to make a final table right before the series to keep my confidence up, is, it's got me in good shape, I think. To play against, you know, one of your best friends' dad, it, it was a lot of fun. And I'm glad he has my chips as opposed to someone else. Obviously, Scott wasn't the favorite, except on the turn. When that long shot comes in, does it sting any more for you to end up losing the pot? It stings because you just you feel so relieved to actually suck out on your opponent, and then to have him re-suck out, it hurts even more. If only all stinging sensations came with forty-eight thousand in cash, though, right? That would make life a lot better. It's easier said than done. When you get so close to winning and you take fifth or fourth or whatever, and you don't win, it really does hurt. The forty-eight thousand is nice. I'm never going to complain about that. But there is a long period of sadness that does follow. Heads up here between Cullen and Jejelowo. We've seen this before. It's queen ten of clubs against king eight. AJ's flopped the best hand with a pair of eights, but Cullen's got a flush draw, a gutter, and two overs to those eights. I like the lead. Cullen's hoping for a raise. He's looking to get it all in right here. Well, Harry can hope all he wants. AJ's just calling. Which is correct. You don't want to get all your money in with second pair. As he has learned... No need to bloat the pot. Ace of hearts on the turn. Cullen picks up a king for a straight draw as well. And there it is. That card gives Cullen the nuts. And JJ Lowo, two pair, kings and eights. Oh, this is dirty. Harry's checking it. 
Come on. All in. And AJ's going to put them all in. Yeah, double check the board, buddy. That is the nuts. Oh, don't tell me Harry doesn't know what he's got. Oh, my. I don't think. <laughs> this can't be happening. Oh! oh. No that one. is unprecedented. I, I have never seen that I before. For a minute, I'll, I was straight. You have There's a nut. I know. That's how tired I am. I almost didn't see it. I almost didn't see it. And by it. the way, I believe Harry. I, I think he made it. a true mistake. He didn't know he had a straight. Man, I almost blew it. God, that would have been a nightmare for the rest of my life. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. Spe especially if with I the had, TV stuff. Because yeah, yeah, you may have never known until oh, you saw it on Lord. TV. Oh, my Lord. It's like Epic, unintentional, oh, slow roll. Time now for part two of Brandon Adams' tour of New Orleans. What makes New Orleans unique is the food, the people, and the architecture. The most unique aspect of architecture in the quarter is the ornate ironwork. Huge amounts of time and money have been spent on this ironwork. The ironwork's unique on almost every building. Most of the effort in the building is meant to appeal to the senses, but there's no great function. Also, the color schemes of the quarter are quite nice, quite unique. The music scene is absolutely essential to nightlife in New Orleans. Locals, when they go out, they go out for live music. And if you have a wedding in New Orleans and you have a DJ show up, people might just leave immediately. This city loves its music. Not a bad way to see the city. Listen, if times ever get tough for Brandon, I'm pretty sure he can just uh, send his resume into Travel Channel. <laughs> a new show on New Orleans hosted by Brandon Adams. It's a winner. I'll take the under on that. <laughs> Blind 6 and 12,000. Anti 2,000. Suited ace for JJ Lowo. Raise. And he's going to make it 36,000. You got to credit AJ. I mean, just never misses a beat. He did have a misstep against Friedlander's aces, and obviously he wasn't too thrilled at the fact that uh, Cullen finally realized he had the nuts just now, but he's right back in the saddle. So far, I'm very impressed. King High flop with a couple of clubs, a little something for both players. The nut flush draw for AJ, double gutter for Allie. AJ fires 45,000 into a pot of 80. Now, they're both the chip leaders, so what Prescott doesn't want to do is raise and get re-raised and can't see the turn. So he's always going to want to call a position and see what comes on the turn. He does exactly that, and now A.J. turns an ace. Already had the best hand. When he checks it. He checks it because, you know, if he bets and he gets raised or an all-in, he's kind of stuck. He can't really do much about his hand. That allowed Alley to check behind him, however, and the queen on the river gives Prescott the ace high straight. AJ checks again. Queen, a very bad card on the river. Not as bad as the eight, but nonetheless, a very bad card. Alley reaches out and touches 140,000 in chips. Action on AJ, and that is an ugly-looking board. The table. Not the easiest fold, but nonetheless, he makes it correctly. He's not just aggressive, he's disciplined. For AJ, he's on a little bit of a slider at this point, having now lost a pot to each of the other three players at the table. Gary Friedlander in second, having used Scott Lipschutz's chips to get there. Ali Prescott not far behind him, and Harry Cullen on the short stack with about 22 big blinds. Those blinds currently at 6 and 12,000. Two nickels for Gary. Raise 30,000. He'll make it 30,000 to go. Jack eight off for AJ. And he's 80, here to play, makes it 80,000 on the button. I like AJ. He's got the big sack. He's going to keep pressure on his opponents. He knows that Freelander is capable of folding a lot of hands here. He's doing what he's supposed to be doing. Not about the cards, more about the situations and the position. And, of course, his table image. Does Gary want to risk the chips that he put together, courtesy of two aces and two tens? The answer is no. And AJ is just steamrolling, folks. Let's play one time. 
It's no fun. The, cam the camera doesn't like it when, you know, uh, you just <laughs> bet and take it like that. I mean, I'll exactly, see some flops. I'm not exactly playing for the cameras. I'll tell you what, if aggression wins tournaments, you can lock this one up for A.J. Jejilowo. Just steps from the French Quarter in the heart of Jazztown, USA, Harris, New Orleans, is a 26-story marvel featuring the Ultra Lounge Masquerade, 115,000 square feet of gaming, fabulous culinary treasures, and plenty more. Welcome back to New Orleans. Now, here at Harris, Besh Steak is one of the best dining options. I don't know if that's dinner for one, but if it is, I hope we can check in later with the guy who ordered it. That's a healthy cut of meat. That's one of those finish it, get one free cuts of meat. It should be. You should get your name on a plaque and a free T-shirt if you finish that. <laughs> I'm in. Let's throw that into the prize pool. That's what I'm talking about. Raise 28000 Prescott making it 28000 with King Jack suited. Cullen's got the same hand in spades. He'll smooth call. A lot of players say three betting is correct. However, I like calling a position with a premium plus hand. Because your hand is so deceptive. No one has a clue what you have. You have position, which is so big, and you don't have to risk your whole stack. But let's look at the other side of it. You could end up taking a flop three or four way that you could have played heads up or one right there. That's true. But what happens when they four bet you and you have king jack suited? Do you like it? I don't. And I also don't like it when it comes ace, nine, ten. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like a pair of nines is the best hand. Couple of Broadway draws for Prescott and Cullen. Friedlander is first to act. Over 100,000 in the pot. I'd be surprised if he led here. <laughs> well, then be surprised, my friend, because he's firing 72,000. I mean, there was a raise and a call behind him, and it comes ace, ten, nine. I'm surprised if Friedlander leads with a pair of nines. Action is on Prescott. You don't really like the hand heads up, let alone when you got another guy left to act behind you, and Allie gets out of the way. Now it's over to Cullen. Friedlander using some of his Kessler Vig. <laughs> Does have pretty tight table image. I got outs. Never in there, though. Nice hand. Well, Cullen's got outs, sure. but he gets out. He can do it. Can All right, do it. nice. Oh, and Friedlander taking it down. Ace you one. hear AJ say, I had an ace. Hmm? Is there something somewhat unethical about saying that afterward? Because now you're at least taking away one of the cards that each of the other two guys in the pot may have had pre flop I think it makes absolutely no difference. It's just poker talk. You're shouting around a table. Oh, by the way, I had an ace. No big deal. Blinds have gone up to 8 and 16,000. Ante stays the same at 2,000. A sheet AJ first. Something tells me we'll see some action. Can't sit back and wait forever, and you certainly don't mind having two nines on the button four-handed. Prescott pops it to 40,000. Cullen pitches the ace-10 almost instantly. I think that's a mistake. In a four-handed game with blinds and Annie so high, when the button's range is so wide, I think if you're looking at ace-10 in the small blind with a 206,000 stack, it's a ship. Instead, it's Friedlander who defended his big blind and has now flopped three jacks, checking it over to Prescott. Almost 100K in the middle. It's a pretty bad flop for Prescott. He more than likely has the best hand in this flop, given that he's heads up against any two random cards his opponent could have. He's hoping his opponent doesn't have a jack, and if he does, he's in big trouble, because it's going to be hard to get away from. He's got a bet of 45000 out there. And Friedlander is going to virtually min-raise it to 92000 Even though it feels like it doesn't cost a lot to call, those min raises can be scary with that board texture out there, right? Absolutely. It's almost like you're begging for the call. Prescott obliges, and the pot is now up to 280,000. Turn is the six of hearts. Doesn't change anything. Look at the finesse and comfort in Friedlander. That tells you he's strong. 
could be because I can see his hand face up. <laughs> of course. That doesn't hurt. But if you weren't looking at his cards and you were in, in Prescott's shoes here, that would be your read. Yes, absolutely. He looks very comfortable making that bet. And he's betting 134 into a pot of 280, which is begging for a call. He certainly does not want a fold. Prescott calls again. This is a big investment he's making into this pot. He's got to have Friedlander pinned on club draw or air. I mean, he's either got air, club draw, or a jack. That's his range. He's not going to follow through so big with a five. He's just going to check calm down. I'm all in. All in. Friedlander is putting Prescott all in. Big decision for Allie. Is Freelander capable of a three-barrel bluff? That started with a check raise on the flop, no less. Yes, that's what Prescott was thinking, and he decided, no, he's not capable. The tides are certainly turning in Gary Friedlander's favor. It started with his pocket aces, getting doubled up by A.J., and now a nice healthy pot courtesy of Prescott's two nines. Friedlander now the chip leader. Having leapfrogged over AJ, he's got 934 to AJ's 856. And a distant third and fourth are Harry Cullen and Ali Prescott. Back to the action. Friedlander aces again. What is it with aces? Moment. Makes it 38,000 to go, and Prescott is going to ship his stack in there with a couple of sixes. Snap call from Friedlander. Lee, man. When it rains, it pours. Alley in horrific shape, a four to one dog heading to the flop. No six there. Friedlander looking good. Prescott. Still can't hit the six. He's got two outs once to stay alive. Can he do it? No, he cannot. That's the nine he needed a short time ago. And so Ali Prescott is your fourth place finisher. We'll pick up a nice hand from the other competitors. And the folks that are burning the candle at both ends here in New Orleans with us will return with more of the South Regional Championship right after this. The streetcar is a fixture in New Orleans, and some of our players might be looking for transportation. Jeremy Gobert and Kunal Patel kick the final table off with a double bust out, and Matt Waxman followed them out the door. Alan cool. right Kessler then took a nasty oh. river. That was really sick. That I felt sick. that coming. Owen. I think it's going to make good TV. And Scott Lipschutz busted in fifth when his best friend's dad made a flush on the river. All in. Call. Call. Golly, man. And just before the break, Ali Prescott's sixes couldn't put a bad beat on Gary Friedlander's aces. So now we're three-handed for the ring and the South Regional Championship. This is when the nerves can sometimes creep in for the amateurs. You get the sense AJ is going to be the guy driving the action. Certainly wouldn't surprise me. He's been an aggressor all day, and he should continue three-handed. His opponents are more on the tight side. He's not the chip leader anymore, however. That honor belongs to Gary Friedlander, who kicks off three-handed action by limping with a suited ace. You think that's designed to defer to AJ and let him commit chips to pots? I mean, I think that Friedlander doesn't want to raise and have to call a re-raise out of position with ace-5. Especially against a guy he knows is capable of a three-bet. He's done it more than anyone else at this final table. So if he calls and gets raised, he can just call. AJ made it 46,000 to go. Gary called, and he flops Jin. Top pair in the nut flush draw. I kind of like my place. Knuckles over to AJ, who follows up that pre-flop raise with a bet of 50,000. Does Friedlander raise or call here? Only he knows the answer. He certainly doesn't want to lose his opponent. Well, then a call would be best, and that's exactly what Gary's done. Pot up to almost 200,000. Second club on the turn gives Friedlander aces up, and Jeje Lowo a flush draw. Both players check. 
Oh, and AJ gets there with running clubs on the end. This could get ugly. Check. Gary checks again. That's a pretty nasty runner runner. And that's a, that's a really incredible check on the river. I mean, I don't know what Friedlander's doing. Is he scared that the guy made the runner runner flush? I think he should have value bet his hand on the river. And now AJ is going to plop 190,000 out there. Gary snap calls. And AJ shows him something gross. He let him get there. Certainly did. Could be a bit of a psychological blow to Gary. He's now relinquished the chip lead back to AJ. Probably blaming himself a little there, too. You're going to love that one. Huh? You're going to love that one when you say it on TV. Oh, yeah. I like top set. <laughs> three, three aces. You can't even believe what I am. Yeah. <laughs> you put I can't believe what I am. I will believe you turn it straight, though. Oh, yeah, this Oh, God, that was well, nothing good. wrong with Gary Friedlander just calling on the flop, but if he had led the turn, maybe things turn out differently. Or even worse, because if AJ calls and the club comes on the river, Friedlander's not going to get away from it. There's a look at the current chip counts. AJ's up to 1.2 and change. Friedlander has slipped into a somewhat distant second place. Laughing at me the whole time. Yeah. Harry Cullen still on the sidelines. Yet to get involved, content to let these two big stacks do battle. Gary lays down the button with a suited queen. Option. Deal. Head up. Rip it. Limp pot Rip. between the two blinds. AJ flops trips, and Harry's got a boat. Deuce is full. Both players check. This is going to get ugly. Fireworks coming to a theater near you. <laughs> I'm now, AJ leads, Harry moves all in, and AJ snap calls. What do you have? Eight. Full house. Wow. Don't do it to me, baby. Cullen's not out of the woods yet. He's got to avoid an eight, seven, or a five. I love you, Harry, but I think I'm rooting for Don't five. Know. <laughs> I think I'm rooting. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do it. Oh, well, the river's a three. Still alive, baby. That's what Harry had in mind. Like the free roll either. Barely still alive. That was a good one, wasn't it? Oh my God. Deuce. I'm trying to end it. I'm trying. I promise. Well, you had an eight. What are you gonna do? You, you thought that was it. You had to. No, I was yeah. finished. At that oh yeah, yeah. In my head, I was like, oh, yeah. just a cold deck for Jeje Lowo. But given what he's doing outside of poker, this tournament is just a blip on his life radar. I'm currently working on a project for the American Heart Association, trying to find better ways to diagnose people that have heart disease. I think having some sort of background in algorithmic thinking can sometimes uh, be beneficial to poker players. It allows you to think systematically as opposed to emotionally. I don't really have a way of getting in people's heads, per se. It's more like I might let them think that they're getting into my head and use that to my advantage. It seems particularly appropriate to say that AJ is putting on a clinic here. Aside from a few cold decks, his aggression and command of the table has really gotten him to this position. And he is continuing with that as he raises on the button. And Cullen lays down ace jack. He's dropped some chips, too. I mean, when are you going to ship it? They had to have made a mistake. The people doing the hole cams <laughs> didn't get it correct because there's no way that you can fold a shack when you're short stacked in this situation. I got to defend my crew. I'm telling you, they know what they're doing. They're not blind. Colin's capable of laying that hand down. Colin, I'm a little disappointed. We might have a bet. Give me something to gamble with. Did I just hear that right? I think you did. I don't know about you, but I think Ace Jack is a good hand to gamble with. You probably got a lot of something to gamble with right now. After this tournament's over, you're about to have a, a lot of something to gamble with. Oh, yeah. With the pay? Yeah. What is happening inside that head of Harry's? 10-8 suited will work, but the Ace Jack won't. All in. Everybody's got a style. We are in the poker twilight zone right now. Count He's it. putting his 116,000 on the line. AJ's asking for a count. What are we calling it? Whatever, I call, I call, I call. You call? And AJ's going to call an extra 96,000 with Queen Deuce off. Oh, Colin is super short. He could have any two small connecting cards. Queen High might be the best hand. 
In fact, it is by a very narrow margin. Oh, that's Much nice broader nine. margin now. AJ has made a pair of queens. Yeah, Cullen's got the gut shot straight draw. <laughs> or backdoor hearts. Nine you can also hit a king for Broadway score. now. It's Just never tell easy. Tell me what you want. Tell what you want. Harry's got Nine 15 outs once. That's not yeah. one of them. That's all she wrote. AJ no claims fun, his man. first victim Boy, at this yeah. final table, and it comes in the form of Harry Cullen, who he's going to put on a plane back to his hometown of Houston. Stewart, baby. Harry, my main man. Enjoyed it, man. Nice to meet you. Yeah, nice to meet you. Fun playing with you. Cullen picks up a little over $95,000 and third place honors. Welcome back to Harris New Orleans and the World Series of Poker South Regional presented by Amp Energy. AJ Jejelowo and Gary Friedlander are about to start heads up play for the ring and the title. AJ with a significant chip lead as we kick things off. Blinds at 10 and 20,000 with an ante of 3K. Gary's been pretty passive throughout this final table. And the trend continues, limping on the button with King-10 off. And a heads-up match, you don't want to be limping on the button a lot. AJ looking down at Ace-10 suited, has Gary dominated, raises to 60,000 and gets called. Ten queen jack on the board. AJ's got bottom pair in a Broadway draw. Friedlander, the same pair. His kicker not as good, but he's open-ended. Taking the freebie. Board pairs on the turn. Neither opponent loving their hand, but they both do have a pair. And both check once more. Brick on the end. Value time? I think AJ should put in a small value bet here. He's not really afraid of his opponent having a jack or a queen in his hand. Instead, he opts to check, and Gary checks in position. He could have put a value bet in in that spot. I think they both missed a small value bet. It's hard to make a pair. Not for AJ. <laughs> <laughs> not for AJ. And not for Gary, for that matter. He's picked expensive. up some pretty big hands. He starts with a lot of pairs. Another uh, pair not flush draw. Well, I had a 10. Yeah. <laughs> I did not have an ace. <laughs> AJ and Gary reflecting over that big pot. They played three-handed. AJ backed into a club flush against Gary's ace five. Gary had aces up. AJ raising on the button to 40,000. A min raise with 9-4 off suit. Friedlander defends with king seven. AJ hits his four on the paired board. Gary checks, and AJ checks behind. Surprising check. He flopped a pair of fours. He's got two pair. His opponent checked to him. Why give him a free card? Especially a free card that's going to give him the best hand. Gary hits a seven and leads for 55,000. AJ calls. Third deuce on the river. Both players with a boat. Gary still got the best hand. He fires again. This time 65,000. AJ makes the quick call. And get a look at Gary 7. 65,000. Small bet relative to the size of the pot. He could have got a little more. Don't want to go too big, obviously, or you may not get paid off, but life just got a little bit easier here in the Big Easy for Gary Friedlander. So I'm in the big blind. Pick up jack nine. Playable. The button, he comes in for a small raise. I call. See a flop, right? Flop comes. Queen, ten, eight. Rainbow. Check. 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 The other guy bets three times the pot. How much? I smooth call. Turn comes a five. And I check. He's all in. I call. I call. I got the nuts straight. Versus trip queens. With over 1.8 million hands dealt at poker stars every hour, there's so much to talk about. The river? You don't want to know. Join in.
at PokerStars.com, the world's largest poker site. Still a decisive chip lead for Jeje Lowo. He's had the chips the whole final table and has done a good job protecting and increasing them. Keeping the pressure on from the button here with Jack-9 suited. Starts to get under your skin when a guy's just constantly aggressive like this. Yes, but that's the style you need to have in order to win tournaments. You have to put fear and annoyance into your opponent to where he makes a huge mistake at the wrong time. Both players flopping gut shots straight draws. Neither look in the bet. Both players improving to two-way straight draws on the turn. Still no betting. Blank river card. AJ's hand is best. Gary checks. And AJ's going to take a shot just in case his jack high wasn't any good. There is something to be said about him checking the jack high behind. Uh, his opponent, Freelander, is never going to fold an ace-queen or a ten. What he doesn't want to do is open the door for a check bluff raise. The only thing he's really worried about is a king high. In the end, it worked out. Time now for the Amp Energy Hand of the Day. Ali Prescott and Gary Friedlander locked up in a hand that ultimately started the downward spiral for Prescott. A non-believer on the flop and turn, Prescott hung on with his pocket nines as long as he could, letting Friedlander get two streets of value with his trip jacks. AJ was an innocent bystander as Friedlander moved in on the river and Prescott figured his nines were beat and finally gave up. And that's your Amp Energy Hand of the Day. AJ tinkering with his stack. He actually says that messing around with electronics, computers, cameras, and gadgets has been a lifelong hobby. Raises it up with Ace-9, and it's Ace-King suited for Friedlander. Uh-oh. Look at the finesse in the way he grabs his chips when he's got a good right. hand. Re-raises to 140,000. You wonder if AJ's paying attention. He's been paying attention this whole final table so far. Enough attention to get himself where he is, and he pushes all in. Gary makes the call. And this is not good for AJ Jejilowo. All his hard work could be heading across the felt unless he can get extremely lucky with Ace-9 against Ace-King. AJ, not too thrilled to be playing a 1.2 million chip pot with Ace-9 versus Ace-King. That Ace-King has just added the nut flush draw to its resume on the queen high board. Ace on the turn doesn't change anything. <laughs> They're rooting for you. They want to go home. <laughs> AJ is still nine fishing. Oh, and there it is. Yeah. <laughs> Unbelievable. Oh. That is unbelievable. The match is over. That is unbelievable. All right, buddy. All right, buddy. Three outs. Okay. Great. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Little over 145,000 at Gary Friedlander, but the real story is the 236 that AJ Jejilowo is taking home. For Friedlander, it's a missed opportunity to come back. And he's no doubt wondering, what if? It was just, I thought I had him. I mean, I, he'd, been, he'd been beating up on me for about two days, and I really wanted to get head up where I could give him a little action and, and got the money in with the best hand. That's all you try to do. So it was a bit of Southern hospitality for A.J. Jejilowo as he takes home the World Series of Poker circuit ring. Jejilowo came in as the big stack and left with the whole enchilada. His aggression never let up, and his confidence never wavered. Winning this definitely gives myself and uh, any other nobodies out there a lot of confidence. And now with over 200 grand in his pocket, AJ will make his next stop at the National Championship in Las Vegas at Caesars Palace. And we'll see you there next time. For Antonio Esfandiari, I'm Alina Jad saying goodnight from New Orleans.